As the world increasingly moves towards consensus on climate change, both its causes and outcomes, I, I should like to focus attention on the biggest single opportunity we have to combat the problem, and that is the protection of the remaining but rapidly dwindling rainforests of the world. Now, I wonder how many of you are fully aware of the benefits to all of us if we could curb or stop deforestation altogether. It is absolutely crucial that the world's forests need to be seen for what they are, giant global utilities providing essential services to humanity on a vast scale. Let's just look at the uh, facts for a minute. Amazonia's forests, for instance, help store the largest body of flowing fresh water on the planet. The trees release 20 billion tons of water into the atmosphere every day. Rain from the forests of the Congo waters half of Africa. Just take the case of Ethiopia, which has suffered decades of drought and famine, in large part as a result of deforestation. 100 years ago, 35% of Ethiopia was covered in trees, but the figure today is barely 4%. So not only are the rainforests the world's air conditioning system and thermostat, and home to much of the world's biodiversity, but they also sustain the lives of some of the poorest people on this earth. And yet, the destruction goes on at a truly terrifying pace despite the knowledge that carbon emissions from burning forests are responsible for around 20% of global greenhouse gas emissions. Only the energy sector has a larger share. Now, you might think that for all these reasons, the world's forests would be treated with respect and their preservation assured. But this simply isn't happening, at least not yet. The problem is, that the true value of forests to the world community is not understood and not paid for. Somehow, we have to find ways of putting a price on them, on the forests, which makes them more valuable alive than dead. So how do we do it? The immediate priority, I believe, is the need to develop a new credit market, which will give a true value to carbon and the ecosystem services that rainforests provide the rest of the world. We are content to pay for the other utilities we receive, water, gas and electricity. So shouldn't we pay as well for the world's greatest utility, its rainforests? In other words, pay for the perpetual retention of forests like Iwakrama in Guyana. Of course, none of this is going to be easy, but surely it should be the ethical duty of wealthy nations, which have, perhaps unwittingly, created the problem of climate change, to find a solution. Developing nations, which may suffer most from climate change and consequently unheard of levels of poverty, are now calling on, on us for help. Climate change means that their survival and ours is now more closely linked than ever before. We hear a lot today about climate change. Who's responsible? What should we do? Turn off the lights? Turn down the heating? Leave the car at home? Stop flying off on holiday? Yes, all these things are important. But this programme tells part of the climate story that doesn't make the headlines. The importance of the world's rainforests. Rainforests are home to endangered species. Most of the world's poor depend on them for their livelihood and they absorb huge amounts of carbon from the world's atmosphere. Yet the world continues to destroy vast areas of rainforests at something like a mind-boggling 6,000 acres an hour. That's 20 times the size of the whole of Kew Gardens.
And that kind of deforestation is a major cause of climate change, resulting in almost a fifth of the world's carbon dioxide emissions. But there is one rainforest that isn't being destroyed. Far from it. It's alive and thriving and showing the world that it is possible for mankind to use precious rainforest without losing it. This is a story that until now has never been told. The Irikrama rainforest sits right in the heart of Guyana, a country the size of the United Kingdom, between Brazil and the Caribbean coast. At around a million acres, it's part of one of the only four intact rainforests in the world. It's home to the Makushi people, some of the world's most endangered species, and over 400 species of birds alone. Trees here can reach an impressive 55 meters in height, Many have been here since the 1800s. Some may even predate the American Declaration of Independence of 1776. But this is much more than just a beautiful place. Trees here store around 119 million tons of carbon. That's over 70% of the annual carbon emissions of the UK alone. So by storing that carbon, Irikrama plays a significant role in keeping the world's climate in balance. The forest was given a unique mandate when the Irikrama International Centre was founded in 1996 and today it's home to a unique experiment to prove to the world that conservation and environmental balance can live side by side with sustainable economic development. Irikrama is divided in two, one part that's cultivated and harvested in a sustainable way and the other a huge untouched wilderness preserve. The research teams can then measure how both areas respond to human activity and how they're reacting to global warming. But as well as offering the world invaluable information about rainforest management and climate change, Iroquois now supports a thriving self-sustaining economy for the Makushi, indigenous forest people that have lived here for generations. Today their shareholders in Iroquois are small but effective commercial timber harvesting operation. The Irikrama's forestry team's carefully prepared management plan specifies an annual allowable cut. That's how much can be harvested without causing harm. As an internationally fully certified forest, Irikrama's plan supports a harvesting business of 20,000 cubic metres of timber, and it's sold to reputable buyers committed to the purchase of certified forest products. South Wallabar, DBH 58.2. Trees are never felled unless they're mature, and then only selectively harvested. Then they're carefully transported as far as possible, avoiding damage to the forest floor, where seeds for the next generation of trees are struggling for light and warmth. With support from its sponsors, Iroquama is already a successful fledgling timber business. With further help and investment, there's scope to grow securing both the future of the forest and the well-being of the Makushi in a unique commercial relationship. <laughs> Further processing to add value to the timber will mean more employment and other opportunities, and its income already provides ecological, economic and social benefits to this community. But most importantly, Iroquama's approach is beginning to show how it is possible to conserve and use a forest at the same time. It's groundbreaking work that's earning an enviable reputation, and the IIC is committed to sharing that knowledge with the world. There are three key elements to what Iroquama is all about. It's about value-added commercial partnerships. It's about valuing community partnerships as well as national and international partnerships. And it's about good governance and fairness. And this is also linked to sharing of benefits. Besides training local people for key jobs, like guides and rangers, it's part of Irikrama's remit to share its expertise through a program of world-class training courses. 
These have a well-established reputation in Guyana and the Caribbean, and at major institutions around the world. Income from training is growing, and there are plans to run courses for gap year students, graduates and professional development, and to become an international center of excellence in training. Fruits, vegetables, spices and nuts from rainforests provide the developed world with much of its diet. And pharmaceutical companies recognize the value of rainforest plants in treating human diseases. It's IIC's role to protect and market these natural assets, and work continues daily in bioprospecting and developing plant products. And so, caring for Iroquois fruits of the forest helps secure its future and benefit the world. I have grown up in this rainforest and seen it develop in so many ways. I am now a ranger and responsible for managing and maintaining the natural resources of the forest. I love this place. This is my home. I want it to be around for my children, my children's children, forever. A new 900-meter airstrip now makes this remarkable place more accessible. And Iroquois now has a small but successful tourism operation, welcoming hundreds of visitors a year. There's guest accommodation at the Forest Nerve Center, the field station at Kuru Kapari, and it's also possible to lodge in the very heart of the rainforest, upriver at Turtle Mountain Camp. But for many visitors, this is the highlight of their trip. This canopy walkway is 30 meters above the forest floor and provides a spectacular insight into all its secrets. For bird watchers, this truly is paradise with over 400 species to discover and Guyana, already hailed by those in the know, as South America's hot new birding destination. The number of visitors here may still be modest, but the IIC has set its heart on making Iroquois the premier eco-tourist destination in Guyana, if not the entire region, offering visitors a once-in-a-lifetime chance to experience the diversity and splendor of life in the rainforest, and to learn firsthand about the threat of climate change. Rainforests lie at the heart of our country. They are among our most valuable assets. And it is important that there is greater international recognition of rainforests uh, to Guyana and its people, to its economy, and to the wider global environment, which is under increasing pressure from climate change. I wish to urge international community and the like-minded institutions and people around the world who share Iwakurama's values to help the center move on to the next stage of work. No matter who or what is to blame for climate change, one thing is certain. It's here, it's happening, and its impact is potentially devastating. Meantime, we know that protecting rainforests like Iroquama is a powerful way of offsetting carbon emissions and that it offers significant reductions now. For us, the forest is, is our livelihood. My grandmother, whom I respect very much, she used to tell me we must only take from the forest what we need and always do it in a way respectable to Mother Nature. I would like to continue to pass on the message to my grandson here, take what you need, don't abuse, just use. The people who are writing the Iroquois story are committed to showing the world that you can strike a balance between using and conserving, saving an irreplaceable natural resource, locking up carbon and helping secure the world for future generations. And that's the untold story of Iroquois. Now it's time to tell the world. I believe that after years of painstaking survey work uh, and measurement, the Iwo Krama forest ecosystem is now in a perfect position to allow a very large-scale experiment 
to be carried out on two vital questions. Questions which the world community must obtain answers to very fast indeed. Firstly, how good is current knowledge about sustainable use and management of tropical forest resources? We all recognise the problems of deforestation, but many tropical countries are very poor and the need to help their economic development and bring their citizens out of poverty will inevitably determine the management of their resources. So to be able to guide this process globally, we must know exactly how much human management and use these ecosystems can stand. Are they robust? Can they grow back at all? Is the best long-term solution for them to be left alone under the proven stewardship of traditional indigenous peoples, thereby providing essential climatic services to the rest of us? This evidence can be gathered in the areas of Iwakrama dedicated to exploring sustainable management. This